Despite the successes encountered by the German Luftwaffe with their famous Junkers 87 Stuka dive bombers in the early phases of World War II, 1939-1945, the system was becoming obsolete by the middle war years and a search for a successor was all but inevitable. This led to a new RLM requirement of February 1944 which called for a tactical multi-role bomber capable of reproducing the combat results of the aging U-87. Blom and Voss submitted several designs for the requirement and one of these became the P.194. Like so many other B&V submissions for Luftwaffe consideration. The P.194 was from the mind of aviation engineer Richard Vogt. B and V designs became some of the more unorthodox aircraft designs of the war with Vogt's chief achievement of this lot becoming the asymmetric BV-141. The BV-141 took on a highly unconventional arrangement in which the aircraft utilized a typical tubular fuselage housing the engine while a separate nacelle was used to house the cockpit. The fuselage and cockpit were both offset from the centerline, the fuselage to port side and the cockpit to starboard. A wing main plane was driven through the design and provided traditional function for the aircraft. The impenage was attached to the unmanned fuselage portion and displayed a single horizontal plane, set to port side, as well as a single vertical tail fin. The result became what was believed to be a better balanced aircraft and, despite its radical design, some 28 of the type were believed to have been constructed. The aircraft first flew on February 25, 1938 and was adopted in limited number for the light bomber, reconnaissance role. Its restricted production reach was largely due to the availability of the engine required but, other than this, the asymmetric design was proven sound enough for military service. The aircraft was also directly challenged by the more conventional Focke-Wulf FW-189 Eagle Owl, UU, a twin engine, twin boom offering of which 864 were eventually procured by the Luftwaffe. With this in mind, the groundwork for the P.194 was laid. The new aircraft was given largely the same asymmetric treatment and involved an offset main fuselage, to port side, housing the engine and tail unit. Unlike the BV-141, the P.194 was to use a combination propulsion scheme involving a conventional puller engine at the front of the fuselage and a turbojet engine fitted to the starboard side nacelle. This starboard nacelle was to also showcase the cockpit and fixed standard armament. The conventional engine was to be a BMW 801 D 14-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engine of 1,600 horsepower fitted to the extreme front section of the fuselage. The turbojet installation became a Junkers Jumo 109004 engine with 2,000 pounds of output power. The tail unit, found on the fuselage tube, was a conventional arrangement with single fin structure and a pair of mid-mounted tail planes. The P.194 was to carry a single crew member in the cockpit nacelle. The wing main plane, a straight assembly with clipped tips, ran through both the fuselage tube and the cockpit nacelle. The cockpit was set at the front of the nacelle with armament below and the turbojet engine to also reside in this structure. Thusly, the main fuselage could be reserved for the conventional power plant, required fuel stores, and an internal bomb bay. A tail dragger wheeled and retractable undercarriage was intended for the aircraft. Dimensions included a length of 12 meters, a wingspan of 15.3 meters, and a height of 3.7 meters. Empty weight was estimated at 14,330 pounds with a gross weight of 20,615 pounds. Proposed armament, to help fulfill the ground attack requirement, was 2 by 30 mm MK-103 cannons paired with 2 by 20 mm MG-151 20 cannons, all concentrated in the cockpit nacelle. For bombing runs, the aircraft was designed to carry up to 1,100 pounds of bombs through the internal bomb bay found in the fuselage. 
It is possible that the aircraft could have also carried externally mounted stores such as rockets under the wings. Blom and Voss drew up several variants for the P.194 project and this included the P.194.0101 with its 52-foot wingspan. The intake opening for the turbojet engine resided under the cockpit. The P.194.0102 emerged with a 50-foot wingspan and featured a more useful bubble canopy. The P.194.0201 was to fit the turbojet under the cockpit as opposed to behind it. P.194.0301 installed the turbojet intakes at the wing routes to either side of the cockpit nacelle and also feature a 50-foot wingspan with bubble canopy. Because the P.194 proposal fell to naught and no working prototypes were ever realized, performance specifications were purely estimated. A maximum speed of 485 miles per hour, a range out to 665 miles, and a service ceiling of 36,420 feet. The RLM went on to favor a competing Messerschmitt design and this went on to become the famous Mi-262 Schwalbe, the world's first jet-powered fighter.